Let's talk about how you go about naming acids. So if you're going to name acids, the first thing to understand is to make sure that you understand what an acid is. It, acids are generally going to be chemical formulas that start with an H, as you can see in all these acids here, and do not have a net charge. Now, given that these are all acids, how do you name them? Well, it depends on the structure of the acid. You'll notice that though they all start with H and therefore acids, um, some of them have a much, I guess you could say, more complicated structure than others. And here's what's really important. Some of them have oxygen in their formula, such as this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and some do not. And that's really the big deal. If it has oxygen in the formula, it uses one naming system. If there is no oxygen in the formula, it uses another different naming system. So let's go through that. What are the ways that you would name an acid? Let's start with the ones that don't have oxygen in their formula. This one, this one, this one. All right, these are all good examples. Uh, let's do this one because it's first. So if it does not have oxygen, the name starts with hydro. Guaranteed. Hydro, hydro, oh, you can't see that. There you go. Hydro and hydro something. This contains phosphorus, so I'm going to call this hydro phosphor, but instead of phosphorus, it's going to be phosphoric. Hydrophosphoric acid. So hydrophosphoric acid. P is a 3 minus, so it requires three hydrogens to cancel out its 3 minus charge. Now we look at the others. Sulfur is a 2 minus, which is why it has two hydrogens. Hydro, sulfur, And then we add ic, hydrosulfuric acid. Okay, for these ones, hydro and hydro, both of them. Bromic, iodine becomes iodic, hydro, I, oops, hydro, Iodic hydrobromic acid. So, no, so notice the, the application of this is pretty uniform throughout. So that's relatively easy, the ones with an oxygen in the formula. For the ones that, sorry, the ones that don't have an oxygen in the formula, the ones that do, they use a different naming system. For these, the name is based on the name of the anion. So these ones that do contain oxygen, the name of the anion determines how you're going to call it. So let's look. This is sulfate, and that's the name of the anion right there. This is phosphate. This is phosphite. This is sulfite. Nitrate and nitrite. That determines how you're going to name it, because if the anion, this 8 ending is there, so if this anion ends in 8, you're going to call it one thing. If it ends in ite, you're going to call it something else. So these two are going to sound similar, and they'll both sound a little different from this one. So what do you call it? You're going to, it's going to, again, based on this name. So sulfate is going to become sulfuric acid. And I'll point out that that 8 ending is the reason why there's this ic ending right there. So likewise, that phosphate means it's called phosphoric acid. Now, phosphate, why do we not call it phosphic acid? Honestly, I have no idea. But for whatever reason, they decided that phosphate is phosphoric acid, so there it is. Again, that 8 is the reason for the ic ending. Now, this ite means that we need to call this one different. So instead of phosphoric acid, we call it phosphorus acid. Notice it's almost the same, phosphor, phosphor, but instead of ic, it's us. So this ite ending demands that the acid have us in the name. 
Notice down here, sulfite, it's going to demand the same thing. So instead of sulfuric acid, it'll be sulfurous acid. We're looking down here at these on the, a little bit further below. Nitrate becomes nitric acid. Nitrite becomes nitrous acid. Eight, ik, it, us. So I've heard it say, said that if you ate an acid, you would say ick. If it helps to remember, then feel that's a good one to use. If you ate an acid, you would say ick. Because, of course, if the anion ends in eight, it demands an ending of ick for the acid. Or if it ends in ite, it demands an ending of us for the acid. So that would be how you may handle the naming of the acids by looking at, first of all, making sure it's an acid. Second, deciding whether it has oxygen or not and then applying the proper naming system with us for an ite or ick for an eight if there is oxygen. Or if there's no oxygen, make sure it starts with hydro, ends with acid, and has ick for an ending, as you can see these other ones do. Fair enough. Now, how about this? So how do you take a, form, a name and change it into a formula? Well, let's start with hydrofluoric acid. What does this tell us? This hydro part means there's no oxygen. Fluoric tells me fluorine is involved, and acid tells me there's an H there. H is a 1 plus, fluorine is a 1 minus. So I need one of each, as you can see from me crossing the numbers. Therefore, the formula is HF, hydrofluoric acid. Um, you can use this for anything, by the way hydro uh, selenic acid. Selenium is a two minus ion. So hydro, no oxygen, selenic, there's selenium. Acid starts with H. H is a plus, selenium is a two minus. You need two hydrogens, one selenium for H2SE. Hydro selenic acid. All right, now let's go over to the next one. Bromic acid it involves bromine. Hydro is not there, so that means that this is not going to be HBr. Oxygen is in the formula somewhere. So I think, hmm, what involves bromine? What's a polyatomic ion we know about? And ah, BrO3 is bromate. This means right here that whatever polyatomic ion it is, the polyatomic ion ends in 8. I'll even make mention of that here. It's a polyatomic ion that ends in 8, as indicated by the ick ending. So BrO3, and then we know it's got to involve hydrogen over here, because hydrogen is at the beginning of every acid formula. So we're going to have one bromate and one hydrogen for a formula of HBrO3. Chlorous acid, us, means the anion is an ite. So I think chlorite, what's chlorite? Ah, from the list of polyatomic ions, it's that. And if it's an acid, there's got to be an H there. H1 plus chlorite is a 1 minus, so 1 hydrogen and 1 chlorite, HClO2. Hypochlorous acid, again, ite, so hypochlorous acid. Hypo is not hydro, so make sure to watch those minor differences there. So hypochlorite is this. Sorry. This is hypochlorite with a 1 minus charge. If it's an acid, you've got an H plus one of these, one of these, HClO. OK, permanganic acid. Ick means the polyatomic ion ends with 8. So permanganate, and there's no hydro, so it's, there's an O in there. Permanganate, MnO4 minus. Acid, so starts with an H. They're both 1 plus, 1 of each. 
HMNO4. Sulfuric acid. That's an 8 ion or sulfate. SO4 2 minus. It's an acid. It contains hydrogen. So we switch the charges with one sulfate and two hydrogens giving H2SO4. Because of the two minus charge, you need two hydrogens to balance it out. The one minus charge requires one hydrogen, the one minus charge requires one hydrogen, the one minus charge requires one hydrogen. Always have to pay attention to the minus charge in order to figure out how many hydrogens to add. So we look at sulfurous acid. Whatever that polyatomic ion is, it ends in ite, as in sulfite, as in SO3 minus, sorry, 2 minus. Add hydrogen to the beginning. You're going to have two hydrogens and one sulfite, giving you a formula of H2SO3. Let's make that clearly an O. Right, so this is the general sort of process you'll use in anything. You can use any, this for any sort of thing that we've covered in this class. For example, what if you have carbonic acid? Again, no hydro, so oxygen's in there. Carbon 8 would be in there. CO3, 2 minus, H plus. One carbonate, two hydrogens, H2CO3, carbonic acid. All right, so it's generally applicable formula. That's how you do it in terms of taking these uh, names and turning them into a chemical formula. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Happy studies.